Hello everyone, it's Chimez Rima Dimba here. Today I'm going to teach you how to make money online through niche sites. Um, I'm going to take you step by step. I'm going to walk you through a long process, but you're going to, at the end of this series, you're going to understand how to do it and you'll be able to create your own niche sites. But before we go into the lesson, some people will ask him, who is this guy? Who is he to teach us? What does he know about making money through niche sites? Well, I'd like to let you know that I've been earning a full-time income online since 2006. I've had ups and I've had downs. I've had incredible stories. I've also had tough times. But over these years, I have, quite, I have learned quite a lot. I've learned quite a lot. And it's that knowledge I'm going to be sharing with you. Well, let's say everybody can claim anything online. But let me just show you a bit of what we did. Let me pick a year. Let me just say 2011. That is eight years ago. So that, that will give you an idea that I've been doing this for quite a long time. And for those of you who have watched my other videos and many importation and other stuff, you know I am still making money online. Okay, so let's dive into it. Let me show you some proof. People like proof. But I'm going to show you proof from as far back as eight years ago. So that will show you that I'm not a new, I'm not a, I'm not new, I'm not a new kid on the block. I'm not just doing this for the first time. It's something I've done repeatedly over and over again, and you can count on my experience. So let's get in. Let me show you. I had an insurance site. That's one of the, my most profitable niche sites ever. That was. Uh, I had it for about nine, ten years, but that, thereabout, and it over that period it made over one hundred thousand dollars from a number of different affiliate programs. If you don't know what an affiliate program is, don't worry. Before we get to the end of today's uh, training, you will know what an affiliate program is. Okay, this is the lead recap. This one was for from first earnings from first of uh, January to. The 31st of January 2011. You can see this was a mail they sent me. It was from a company called Insure Me. It has been bought, it was bought over later by Bankrate, and I think another company bought it thereafter. So, but that was the mail they sent me. You can see the total number of hits I made. I got a total of 840 leads for them. This was a paper lead uh, met, uh, type. And uh, look at my total income or earnings for that particular month. That was it. $5,589.53. That was what I made. You can see it here. Let me make it bigger so you can see it quite very well. Let me scroll down. Let me see. Can you see the amount there? Five thousand five hundred and eighty-nine dollars fifty-three cents. Okay. Now somebody will say, uh, "People can Photoshop things." Well, I, I know people can Photoshop things, and because of that, let me sh let me show you the payments that were sent in. Remember that was earning for the earnings I got for the month of January, from January to. 1st of January to the 31st of January. So let's see my payment. The payment was sent on the 2nd of February. Let's show you. That's it. 233281. That's in the account. And they paid a total of $5,589.53. You can see it. That's the total amount. You can see approved centralized inward transfer in from insure me inflow from insure me that's one but like i told you there were a number of other affiliate programs but that particular month we made over nine thousand dollars let me just show you a few more for that particular month you can see the date you can see the date is second of february when they were making the payments the next one was on on that on 16 they made the payment you see, this is 1,866. You can do the math. 
1,866 plus 5,580 something. You see, you're already talking of about uh, um, 7,400, uh, thereabout. Now, let's go. Then you see the third one. For that same one, 500 and something. So you see, and this, this was not all. This was not all. Uh, there were other side earnings. I also earned from uh, Google AdSense at that multiple, for that particular site at that part, uh, for that particular month. And uh, that was that. That was an insurance. Let me even show you the site that I use for that. I no longer own this site. Somebody else owns it. But uh, back in the day, I used to own it before I had some matters that made me let it go. But that was the site. Now, that is not how it looked. As we get into the lesson, you may see how it looked, but for those of you know, we can, let me show you how it looked then, so that you know I was not just talking trash. I'm going to what we call the Wayback Machine. It shows you how a site used to look back in the day. The connection is a bit slow, but uh, because it's important that I show you what we have done, let's uh, just hold on a bit. Okay, so we're going into the archive. So I just want to see. The Wayback Machine, that's archive.org, is where you can check how a website used to look back in the day. It's like the web's archive. So it's loading that page. You, you, would, you will get to use this site a bit in future as you build out your own niche site because it will help you look at... Uh, the history of a site in case you want to buy what we call an expired domain. So we are waiting for the page to load. So you, you've, you've seen the earnings we, we made. So I'll close those windows. Now let's get back to this kind. That is a summary of quality insurance site map blah 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 so let's look for 2011 that's about when this site earned that amount so that you see how it looked when we open it you see a quote box where what is it called that was bringing us the leads now i have not gone into the i've not started the lesson i'm just trying to show you that this this guy is not a theorist it's something he does i do this thing and I've been doing it for a long time. I'm very sorry for the slow connection. I'm not at the network, but I just want you to see how it looks. Just hang on a bit. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll pause the video. Okay, so it's open. So let's, let's pick a selection. Let's select one. I've selected the snapshot because this uh, site, archive.org, saves different snapshots of your stuff. Okay, so that's how the site looked then. It was an insurance, it's an insurance site still, but unlike now, when it is now used by an agent, an agent bought it over, then it was just selling insurance, US insurance. That's how the articles look like. You can see. The people who paid me, Hometown Woods, that's one of them. The other one, Insure Me. If you look here closely, you will see Insure Me. You can do, you can do your own search by yourself and find out. And go to web, web uh, go to archive.org, type in quality-insurance-4-less.com. You'll see, you'll be able to check and verify this by yourself. I think that's enough about the intro. It's almost gone into 10 minutes. So we're going to go into another thing. This is another affiliate program. This one, this one was not insurance. Look, you can see the commissions we made. So let me close that. So anybody who has a mind and can actually do things, you can verify those things by yourself. Now let's go into the lesson. Because this lesson is about how you can do it. I only told you how I have that I have done it so that you trust my judgment and follow my lesson. Okay. Now we go into the lesson itself. How do people make money through niche sites? That's a big question, isn't it? It's actually very easy if you understand 
how the internet works. But since you don't understand, let me show you. First, people make money through niche sites by creating value that meets needs. Basically, it's still the same rule of life. Everywhere for you to make money, you have to give value. Uh, money is, you get money for the exchange of value. Somebody needs A, you give it to him, and in exchange for that value he's getting from you, he gives you money. That's basically how it works. And that's also how it works online. This, the next thing is, you have to present that value to people who need it. That's the other rule. You can have awesome value, but you will not make money from it, both online and offline, anywhere you are, if you don't make people who need that value see it. If you don't get your value before the people who need such value, makes sense and it's simple. So that's the same rule online. You present that value to people who really need it. The third is you monetize the value provided. So how do we present, how do we create value that meets needs? How do we present that value to people who really need it? And how do we monetize the value? So let me quickly walk you through how it is done online, answering all these questions. Now, how do I start that? I'll start by asking you, when you have a question or you need to find out the answer to stuff, where do you go? You guess right. You come to Google. That's where all of us come to. Now, you come to Google. Some people will say, Google it. Let me say, I want to develop a bigger bicep. I'm a, quite, I'm a pretty slim guy. But if, what if I want my biceps to become much thicker? And I can come to Google and say, how to build a bigger, how to build bigger, bigger biceps. So, okay, you can see this hunk of a guy. You can see the kind of biceps he has. Now, I've asked the question, how to build bigger biceps. That means what I need is how to build biceps. Now, somebody has to provide that value for me. Now, there are people who have the value. One is a video. But let's just skip the video because I don't want to start loading the video now. And let's see the people who answer the questions. Let's see. We have how to build bigger arms, increase bicep and tricep size, strong lifts. Next one, want bigger biceps. Here's how to get them. Let me just open this one, bodybuilding.com. Okay, now remember what is it? I need bigger biceps. And then this guy is about showing me how to get bigger biceps. And I start reading his stuff. I start reading his stuff. That's the article. That's the article. As I'm going through, they're showing me how to develop bigger biceps. They're showing me how to develop bigger biceps. They're showing me how to develop bigger biceps. When I am done reading it, I might now discover. Oh, for you to actually build big biceps, there are things you need. There are things you need. You need, like they said, I should use dumbbell calls. I may discover now I need dumbbells to be able to do that. Then they may tell you, you need to eat certain types of food. They say, okay, you need whey protein. And now I'm on this site. I love what they teach. I appreciate their authority, they have shown their expertise, and I understand what I need to do to build big biceps. But now I discovered that for me to build big biceps, I need to be on some protein diet. And I said, okay, where do I get this protein diet? They've already recommended it on their store. So I go, I say, okay, look at the protein I need. Okay, the whey protein, I click on it. That's what I need. That's one of the things I need. And I look at the products here. Let me close this. I check and I decide, okay, let me buy this. And I click and I buy. When I buy, what has happened? This website has made some money. Pretty simple. Yes. Now, what did we do? I had a problem or I had a need. I wanted bigger biceps. I came online. I searched on Google. Some people had provided the answer to that. I clicked. I read what they had. As I was reading, I found that I needed some things to get that goal achieved. And one of those things was that I needed to be eating some kind of stuff. And I came, checked it out, and saw I had to place an order for this, and I ended up buying it. That's basically one way. Now, what if I don't sell products like this, or if I don't have a product? I could as well also link to people who sell these products. That's why we said 
you first create value that meets need. This this store has this uh, site has done it. And the next thing is you present that value to people who really need it. This site has found a way to appear on Google's results for the matter they have created value for how to build bigger biceps. Now, don't worry. As you go through this lesson, we're going to take you into how you can also come into this Google search so that when people search for what you offer, they will find you on the Google Google's uh, re re search engine uh, res result page so that you will show up here. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm just trying to lay a background. You see, the first thing is there was a, a va value was created by this site in answer to our question, how to build bigger biceps. And after that was answered, we started reading. And as we read and we were interested, we saw we needed products to help us achieve our goal and we clicked through. That's basically what it is. Now you might get to some sites and they will not, you might not buy anything, but they, you might see adverts. When you see those adverts and you click them, the site owner makes some money. Remember, we're answering the question, how do people make money online? We said you create value. You now see one of the value, create, value created. You present that value to people. How do you present it? In one way, make yourself found, get yourself found on Google or get your solution found on Google. You will learn how to do that later on. Then finally, you monetize the value you've provided. Now, this site we used for this example is monetizing by selling a product. But that's not the only way or by selling products. You can see they have a store that has quite a long list of different products. Now, you might not have such. You're just a solo entrepreneur. So what do you do? Let's see the other options available to you. You can monetize by selling your product that is either a physical product or a digital product. This case, in the site example we use, they have physical products. Sometimes some people might sell information products. They can prepare a tutorial, prepare a video series, and it becomes what? A product that they sell, information. So some can have software that, okay, let's say software to help you track how the progress you are making, and it costs just $10. Things like that, they are selling products. It could be a physical product in that it's something you can hold, or it can be a digital product like information, like software, and so on. But that's not all. It could also be, you could also monetize by selling your service. Somebody, let's say using the uh, bodybuilding example, the person can be a bodybuilding trainer a trainer to help you achieve your bodybuilding goals. Now that trainer could list his service. He has shown you his expertise. You now know he can do this stuff very well. You trust his judgment. You trust his knowledge. Now you want him to be your personal coach or you want to go to the gym he runs and train. You pay money. He's selling his service. But that's not the only way. You can also promote and make money. by. You can make money by promoting other people's products. That is, a company has products or services you can promote on your site, and then you get a commission for promoting them. That is actually how I made money through this. Uh, all the money I made in those examples I gave you at the beginning, all those 9K, the $5,000 plus, the $1,000 plus, and everything, I made it by just becoming affiliated to companies that had the service that fit my 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 content i i got i promoted their their stuff and they gave me a commission for every time somebody took a predefined or predetermined action now there are a number of options a number of actions people can take that will generate uh, revenue for you or a commission you could it could either be pay per view they will pay you for people who view. Usually that is on videos. They pay you per view. They could pay you per 1,000 view. The other option, that is a PPV there. Some can pay you per click, like Google AdSense, they pay per click. When somebody clicks on an ad, you are paid. That is pay per click. Then the other option is pay per lead. 
Like in the case of the insurance site I talked about, you discover that when people submit their zip code and a certain uh, other, uh, their phone number and some other details, the company generates a qualified lead. And when that person is qualified and they show it, come, the, the person who, came, who, who filled in that form com, came from you, they'll pay you a commission. So that's another option. The other ones are paper action. Paper action actually includes all these, but the actions might neither be lead, some might say when you pick your phone and call, when you make a call to this phone number, they will pay you. Some might say when you sign up for an email, uh, on, on an email list. Some may say when you order a trial product. The options are quite limitless. Then the final one is pay per sale. For you pay, they pay you when you make a sale. Like I showed you, the, there, was a, there was a guitar site I, t I showed you briefly. I know it was not, I didn't leave it for long. Now, the, the, the Gita site, uh, that's it. Yeah, they're prompting me. This one, it's a Gita. You can say Ibanez RG a string Gita. This one is a pay per sale model. They, they paid me per sale. So when I, when, I, when, I, when I made a sale, for each sale I made, they paid me 6% commission. So I, for this, I made two sales, and they gave me 6% of the total, which was that. For this, I made one, and so on. So they can also pay you per sale. That's basically how people make money through niche sites. They provide value. When they provide that value, people who need the value go to Google, search for them. When they find them, they go to their site, interact with the site, read their content, watch their videos as they get used and, and begin to trust the expertise and the authority of this site or the writer on the subject matter. They begin to take this person's uh, refer um, recommendations seriously. As you get to trust somebody, you begin to trust his recommendations. And then when you click one of the links on his site, he gets a commission when you make a purchase or when you click, depending on the arrangement. I've explained those. Now, having said all this, you cannot, you cannot promote a product and get profit if you don't have people who come to your site. You cannot get clicks on an advert if people don't visit your site. If you, do, you cannot get views if you, people don't visit your site. So basically, do you have created value? And do you want to appear on Google? All these things, you cannot achieve your monetization goal unless you have traffic. When we say traffic, we, we are referring to website traffic. So it's not the traffic on the road. It's website traffic. So basically, so for you to achieve the step one, which is um, monetizing, making the money, you need to get traffic. And that's what I'm going to begin to explain to you now. So how do you get traffic? There are many different ways you can get traffic to a site. You can pay for the traffic. You, you might have had people talk about Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, Google ads. Some people can even pay a site owner, a site that has heavy traffic. You can pay the site owner, say, please, I want some of your people to my site. You can pay for traffic. You can, you can pay somebody who has a big email list and you pay him and he promotes your stuff and people come to your site. You can put banners. You can pay for banners on another site. You, there are a number of different ways you can get traffic by paying. But in this lesson, we're not going to talk about paying. There are, it's also the free. Free is in quote. It's just when we say free, it means you're not necessarily dipping your hand into, pocket, into your pocket to pay for that traffic. But it doesn't mean it won't cost you anything. It will cost you time. It will cost you uh, time and you're going to cost you your knowledge. You're going to sit down and drop your knowledge. Now, you can get free traffic from social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google, like on uh, YouTube. You, you can create a wonderful video and put it on YouTube. As it ranks, people come watch the video. As they watch your video, they might take action and buy what you want or do take the steps you want them to take. When that happens, you are driving traffic. It's website traffic. Traffic to your offer. Let people who need your stuff see it and let them interact with what 
you have and then give you your desired response now but in today's lesson we're going to be paying attention to google search engines because they offer one of some of the best kind of traffic and they offer you some of the best kind of traffic why why do we say they offer you some of the best kind of traffic it is almost like uh, how do i give the example let me say you can you can you can if you have money you can you can do a, a wonderful video on how to build your biceps and then come to go to facebook and pay some money and have people see it but you can target very well and hope that people who you target people let's say bodybuilders and say how to build bigger biceps and expect that at that moment those people will want to watch eventually if you if you know how to do facebook ads very well you, people will come and see your stuff and take action but it will cost you money and it's a different type of traffic it's a different type of um, the, the way you get people is totally different because you are interrupting them when people come on facebook they are not coming to look at your ads they're coming to interact with your friends for example and then the, your ads just pop up and they see your ad they might ignore it they might take action F uh, google traffic is totally different in the sense that the person who comes to google to search is coming is looking for what you offer i don't know whether you you're seeing the difference in on face on facebook ads and other such in, in paid traffic and all such medium you are interrupting people they are not they are not actively looking for you they are not actively looking for what you have to offer you they are just doing other things and then like an ad flashes and they say oh they might not respond then they might respond later but in the case of google when somebody is doing a search he is actively search and searching for it it's like you can carry water to people and start knocking from door to door do you need water do you need pure water it is not the same thing as when you people are looking for you people who are thirsty are looking for you so in the case of google it's like thirsty people are looking for the water you sell you see if you if if you position yourself correctly and those thirsty people who are looking for water come to your store where you sell chilled water you know selling is a no-brainer that's why traffic from google is one of the best kinds of traffic are you getting the point so when people come to google let's use another example how to lose weight somebody types in how to lose weight you already know he is trying to lose weight that's one of the interesting things now what are you somebody says how to, you can see they're already giving us example let's what are you somebody says how to lose weight in two weeks let's do that how to lose weight in two weeks that person has given you additional information that he doesn't just want to lose weight he wants to lose he or she wants to lose weight in two weeks now let's see other examples you say somebody says he wants to lose weight in two weeks at home another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks with lemon <laughs> another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks in nigeria another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks without exercise another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks naturally another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks fast another person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks fast without exercise and person says he wants to lose weight in two weeks with apple sign and cider vinegar let's check this one now now if you look at these examples the, one of the advantages of google's search is that beyond having people who are actively searching for what you want you're also having people who give you detailed information on what they actually want if somebody says and he wants to learn how to lose weight fast without exercise he has made it explicitly clear to you that he doesn't want you cannot write for him how to lose weight with exercise what he has told you giving you details of who he is how he wants to get the solution so with that more intel with the with the additional intel you have on this uh, potential customer you can serve him better so 
Google's uh, when, when visitors come to Google, they actually show you their intent. What they want. They give you details about what they want. And that brings us to the next thing. Now, there is something called search intent. All I'm doing is giving you a background. Please understand. All I'm doing is giving you a background. If you don't get this background, you fail. I can guarantee you that if you don't get this background, say, oh, let's get to the main thing. Let's get to the main thing. If you rush it, you go forward, you will fail because you will not know and understand how this thing works. Now, there is something called search intent. Like I said, when people run a search, they are giving you their intent. This person is showing you he wants to lose weight in two weeks fast without exercise. He has given you what he's looking for. Now, we ask, this person who wrote this, what, where will you say he is in the shopping process? Is he ready to buy? Not likely. He's, he's looking for information on how to lose weight fast. So that brings us to search intent. Search intent tells you whether this person is a, an information gatherer, whether he's shopping, or whether he's about to buy. Now, if somebody is typing this, this person is looking for information, clearly. So the search intent is this person is looking for information. So you can position yourself as an information provider. But what if somebody searches for something like, um, let's say, best weight loss T, fine? Best weight loss T. This person is not at the same stage as the other person who said he wanted to lose weight without exercise. This person has done some research and understand, understands that one of the ways you can lose weight is with, with a weight loss tea, without exercise, is with a weight loss tea. And then he's asking for, he's looking for the best weight loss tea. So in this case, you can now show him the different options. This person we can say is shopping for what? weight loss teas. Think about it. So he's not at that initial stage like the other person. He has gone further. He's looking for the best. He knows about weight, he knows about weight loss teas. No, he not, he's not looking for a particular type of word, weight loss tea. So if you pick this, if you pick this and click, let's say click any of the articles here, you will see they will make recommendations. They might give you a top five, a top whatever, and then when the person picks on it, he will get, he will see the various options. Sorry, this thing is a bit slow in loading. Let me see if my connection is still up. Okay. The best weight loss tea. Just a minute. Let me reload it. Let me pause this so that I don't waste your time. Okay. As if it had me. Okay. So they are giving you examples of weight loss teas. You can see. Number one, green tea. <laughs> you can see number two, poor tea. You can see black tea. You can see oolong tea. Now, let's just click one of those links. If we click one of those links, oolong tea. <laughs> are you seeing? They are talking, they are giving you more information. Let's say of all the options I read, I discovered that oolong tea is the one I prefer. Now, a cup of we contain this. We are getting more information. Now let's see. They will likely show us where we can get oolong tea. Or they might even be selling it on their site themselves. They're showing you the benefits, the other benefits of oolong tea. So now this site is basically monetized via adverts. So they are not necessarily trying to refer people to the site, but you've seen, let's say oolong tea. Now 
we now know what we want is oolong tea. If we come to this to Google and try to buy oolong tea, say oolong tea. Now, now if somebody now searches for oolong tea, he's, he has gone beyond searching, asking you, how do I lose weight without exercise? And has gone beyond asking for the best tea, weight loss tea. It has come to a specific type, oolong tea. You can see that this person is closer to the shopping cart. It's about placing an order. So by the time, if you have somebody who is searching for this, you, you can as well say, oh, I am about to make a sale. So you can sell to this person. Are you getting the point? You can promote this in a different way from when you would have written if you're writing about best uh, best weight loss tea or how you'd have written someone who's asking you how to lose weight. Let me use another example that might be a bit clearer. Let me say mm, vacuum vacuum cleaners. Something I understand a bit. Vacuum cleaners. <coughs> vacuum cleaners. If you're reading about vacuum cleaners, you are still looking, this person is searching for information generally. Then let's say he has searched and he now says best vacuum cleaner for pet hair. He has moved closer. He's no longer talking about vacuum cleaners in general. He's not looking for a a, a range of vacuum cleaners that are devoted to pet hair alone. He understands that not all vacuum cleaners can do a good job for pet hair. But now, what if the person now goes and says he wants Dyson V10 animal? Now, I'm, I'm doing this because I understand uh, Dyson vacuums. Okay, Dyson vacuum V10. Dyson V10 animal. It's a specific type of what vacuum cleaner now this person is at the buying stage he has gone beyond shopping he knows the particular type of vacuum cleaner that he wants and it's about if you if you handle him correctly it's about making a purchase those are things we refer to as search intent now there's another thing that shows search intent let's say somebody's comparing vacuum uh, Dyson V10 Anima versus Absolute. These are two types of uh, Dyson vacuums. The person is torn between two opinions. Should I go for Dyson V10 Animal or should I go with this? So this person has narrowed his options just, just down to two. So he's not like somebody at the early stage who was just searching for information. Vacuum cleaners. And he's not somebody who's at the second stage who's saying best vacuum cleaners. And not somebody who's saying best vacuum cleaners for pets. And then somebody who is now got to the specifics. I want either uh, Dyson vacuum, Dyson V10 animal, or Dyson V10 absolute. Now, I hope this is giving you an idea to what we are looking at. So, the search intent, the search intent it's very important because if you go get people who are only at the initial stage, people who are still doing research, if you're only getting people who want research, the results you will get will not be close. That's the conversion to sales you will get will not be close to somebody who has people who are about to make the final purchase decision. Now that you've understood that, the next thing is, you need to also understand the importance of the position, the various positions on the search engine. Let's look at this. If you are ranked number one, like this site that is number one, if you are ranked number one, you get about 33% of the total search. So let's look. This um, keyword, Dyson Vacuum, Dyson V10 Animal versus Absolute. The volume is about 720 monthly searches. Okay, so if you are number one, if you're number one, okay, let's just normalize. Let us say the volume is about 1,000 for easy math. If you are number one and you get 33% of it, that means you'll be getting what? 33 
divided by 100 times 1,000. That means you get 330 people. What if you are second? That means you will get about 15%. If you are third, you get about 9. And the number keeps dropping as you go down. Which means it's in your best interest to rank as high as possible for a such term. It's in your best interest to rank as high as possible for a such term. The higher you are, the much more you get. Now, for whatever it's worth, make sure you are on the first page. Because the first page gets 75% of the search volume. You ask yourself a question. How many times do you ever come to search or something? After searching on the first page, you now come here and click number two. Do you do that? If you do, how often do you do that? That should give you an idea. Most people also behave like you do. They hardly go to the second page. I, I hope that what I have uh, done so far has given you a fair idea of how people, how people make money online. It's an intro. How people make money online. Now, we're going to go to the next stage, which is you're going to pick a niche. You're going to pick a niche. You notice that in the examples I gave you, the sites were about something, a focused topic. Like this is health. This one talks about health. Your site cannot talk about everything. If you talk about everything, you dilute your effectiveness. So that's what we're going to look at, getting a niche, picking a niche. Let's pick a niche. The question is, which niche should I pick? Now, this is where you will begin to get a better understanding of what we're doing. Let's look at this. Hang with me, Usain Bolt. Do you know him? Usain Bolt. Everybody knows him. He's the fastest man alive. Fine. Let, let's, let's look at this guy. Usain Bolt. You say, what has Usain Bolt got to do with, with building a new site? You will understand in a moment. Let me click this. You open this. Let me see another thing. Let me see pregnant woman. Now, I'm doing this so that it will stick in your mind. You will not forget it. You, it will stick in your mind. Let me pick an image too. Okay. Now, which niche should you pick? Don't forget. If I am told to run a race, if there's a competition and we are supposed to run, and they say, whoever wins is one against one. Just two people running at a time. Everybody pick who you want to run against. The winner of every race will win $10,000. I'll ask you a question. Do you think it will be in my advantage, to my advantage, to pick Usain Bolt? Say, I want to race against Usain Bolt. You get the answer. If I race against Usain Bolt, you can almost guarantee that I will fail. I will lose the race. Even if Usain Bolt has a problem in his leg, I can bet he will still outrun me. But what if I am smart enough and I just pick one pregnant woman, a very pregnant woman, a woman who is almost due, like this one in this picture here, a woman who is maybe close, and say, since there are no rules, you pick anybody you want, I have decided to pick a pregnant woman. People might call me a shameless man. Look at you. Instead of looking for a man of your size to run against, you're picking a pregnant woman. But that doesn't matter. By the rules of this game, it is whoever you pick, you can run against. So it's better for me in that contest to pick a pregnant woman and say, I'm running against you because I'm sure. No matter how strong the pregnant woman is, if she's like eight months pregnant, I can overtake her. I can run past her. That's the same mindset. I want you to bring when you are picking a niche. When we started earlier in the day, back in the day rather, some of us had egos. We say, I want to pick, I, I, I want to pick a tough niche. I, I can show them me too, I'm a good SEO. And I picked niches like cheap auto insurance in the US. If you meet anybody, if you meet anybody who knows about insurance, they will tell you that that is one of the craziest niche, 
niches online. To show you, look at the cost per click. If you look at this very well, cost per click means how much somebody will pay to Google AdSense uh, to Google if they want number one position for this keyword. They will pay per click, one click. They will pay how much? F about f currently as of today, about forty dollars forty five cents for a click. For those of us in Nigeria, if you calculate that, that's over over oh, about fourteen thousand thereabout. For 14,000 naira for just a click. Somebody clicks it. That was the kind of keyword I went for. And really, because I was committed and I had the skills, I actually eventually won. But look at the problem. These types of keywords are fiercely competitive because they are also highly profitable. Let's do the math. The volume is 90,500 a month. Multiply that by 40.5. There's a reason I'm doing that, for you to get the average value of the keyword. 90,000 times 40.45. As said today, this keyword, let's say it's worth about 3.6 million US dollars. Now, what does that tell you? Every guy who knows how to do SEO will fight for this keyword. And that was one of the big mistakes I made, which eventually made me lose that site. That was that made me over a hundred thousand dollars. I was fighting, and now I ranked number one for cheap auto insurance for about four days. And for each of those days, I was dropping over a thousand dollars every day. I was making as in pure profit. But the problem was every other person too who knows SEO was looking for that same keyword, and so you will stay ranked number one. Some other persons will come try to knock you off. They go as far as using what we call negative SEO tactics. So, what's my advice? When picking a niche, avoid competitive niches. It's like a fight. Pick the easy to win fights. Because think about it. What you want to make at, at the long run is you want to make profit. It doesn't matter whether you made the profit in a highly competitive niche or an easier to win niche. So, do not forget that. Now, closely related to that, uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. I've already talked about competition. So when you want to pick a niche, pick a high commission niche. There, is a, there are niches that pay little and there are those that pay quite a lot. Insurance pays a lot, but it is not a place to go. I've also had niches like mesothelioma, mesothelioma that pay quite a lot i want to show you guys i've been in this thing mesothelioma oh i made a mistake mesothelioma sorry i want to show you so that you get mesothelioma look at it that's the correct you see the amount this is 74 dollars per click so this one is even crazier <laughs> than than insurance although it's, it, it does it's not as broad it doesn't have a very wide reach it's not a very broad niche. it's a very small niche and if you think that one was bad look at a keyword like this mesothelioma lawsuit this one is 208 dollars per click i did i did this at the, at the time and i was getting like 520 dollars per lead now you can see you can look here let me see if i can expand this so that you can see it clearly more clearly let me just scroll you can see what i showed you 208 let me sh let me scroll to one side look at this you can see 250 cost per click that's per click and look at the total volume available for this keyword every month that's the number total number of search mesothelioma lawsuit after death is 250. now i wouldn't advise that you go for keywords like this why the competition is usually not worth it before you think you're ranking number one somebody else is knocked off and people fight for it people keep, look at the number of people competing for something that just has 2000 2400 over over half a million results you understand this later as you go through the video now i will advise you 
when you as, as you're watching this video this first time watch it to the end and then i when you watch it after watching it to the end watch it again because a lot of things are interrelated when you watch it the second time you will understand some of the things i'm saying now better when you watch it the third time you even understand it much better so avoid niches like this so while it is advisable that you pick niches that pay you high commissions do not necessarily go for niches that have high cost per click now using amazon affiliate program as an example let me open it mm. let me yes let me open this so you see how much the pay fine i'll try and make this bolder so you can get an idea of how much they pay for each niche product product category you can see you can come and read it on your own later on now this amazon fashion men's and kids private label luxury beauty amazon coins they pay 10 percent commission on the product furniture home home improvement lawn and garden pets products pantry they pay eight percent apparel amazon cloud camp devices amazon elements smart tv with fire tv amazon fire device tv devices and blah 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 they pay seven percent headphones headphones beauty musical instruments business and industrial supplies they pay six percent outdoors tools blah 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 they pay five point five percent you can find this by just coming to google and searching how much does amazon amazon pay affiliates how much commission does amazon pay affiliates if you search for it you can come get it and come and read it by yourself just pick this the one that has amazon link in it it will take you to what i just opened now why is this important it's important because if let's say you, you pick a product where the commission is just let's say there are products that the commission is uh, is zero percent they don't pay any commission on it you will work so hard and get nothing or you now pick a product that sells one percent you work so hard and for the for visitors you recommend and bring to the side you will get just one percent of your efforts let me show you how this plays out in real life let me see now we open amazon you pick a product on amazon and check it if the product costs 200 let me let me pick this and let's say dyson since i know about it, dyson dyson v10 animal called less vacuum let's just open it and so we can see fine you can see the amount it sells the dyson look at it it sells for 483 dollars so this one should come under let's just assume it comes under um, it comes under um let me say it comes under home or it comes under this it's not under industrial supplies let's just say it comes under home you can find out by checking in your affiliate account but let's just say yes let's say it's under home home and kitchen now that means you will get 40 uh you will get uh, six percent we get six divided by 100 times 483 that's $28.98 for every person whom who you refer who buys now some of you might wonder how 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 will you refer that's another lesson it is something that happens automatically you will not be calling people on phone you will build your site in a particular way that this will be happening automatically even when you sleep for example now as i'm doing this video i am making money on an affiliate on my affiliate programs the programs i'm affiliated to. as i'm talking i'll just finish close and go and check my account and see how much i've made so if you set it up following the way i will teach you in subsequent videos you will be able to do this so don't bother just get the lesson for the moment okay so it's very important that you pick a niche that has pays 
considerable commission. For me, I for one, unless I have very good reasons, I'll try to do a product that gives me at least 5%, 5% commission. Now, you might also, your logic might also be, oh, it's easier to compete for some lower stuff. Like you may want to do toys and discover that, look, these toys are not heavily competitive. So I can actually get a lot of volume and then compensate for this low distance. If that's okay with you, fine. But if you want to follow my advice, I will say you go for the high commission niche. Why? If you send 100, if you, if you send 100 people and 20 of them buy, you will get 20 times the commission. But if it's, if it's a low commission niche, you send 100 people and 20 people also buy, you will get a small amount. So for your effort, you are better served by a high commission niche. The only reason why you should not pick a high commission niche is if it is highly competitive. Okay, now, the other thing you check is profitability. Now, somebody may say, it's high commission, not the same thing as profitability. It is not exactly. Like I showed you in the example of um, uh, mesolioma lawsuit. The competition has reduced its profitability. If you look at the sheer number of people competing, you think and ask yourself, if I'm competing against 500, five, over half a million people and the total volume is just 2,400, is there enough space for me to be profitable? The answer is no. And look at this one page, 250 per click. But look at that, the volume is only 110. So I would say, look at the volume versus the costs. So let me give you an example. If you say Dyson vacuum, you can see it's 201,000 monthly and the cost per click is just this. And Dyson vacuums sell quite, are quite expensive. Look, one sells for as much as this. And this is not even the most expensive one. Let me just do Dyson vacuum. I'm just typing so that we get the full result. So let's see. Let's not pick the feature. Let me pick high to low. So you have an idea of how expensive these things can be. Now, Dyson has expensive stuff. So you see most of their stuff are in the range of $500 and above. $500, $700. You can see for yourself. So that means it's good buy for me, some $800 and above. So if you look at the price, it makes sense. So if I'm getting 201000 of this, it's a good listing. Let me, uh, let me quickly drop ideas uh, in your mind. Let's see cameras, the d digital cameras. Cameras. Now cameras has what? Sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. Just, there's a camera. And you see the volume. This one has six million. Though the price is quite cheap. Now look, look you now begin to check. There are over 60,000 different camera models from different brands. So there, there is enough space for you. So those are some of the things we look at. There's quite a long space, a broad space. And if I go back to the vacuum stuff, I can even decide to make the entire vacuum instead of just saying, just Dyson vacuum. You see, they have a, over 100,000 options. Are you getting my point? Let, let, let's look at something like, uh, mm, let me just speak something. Uh, let's say, what? Okay, let me just say guitars. I like, I'm, 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 I'm doing things I know of and I've worked with. Gita. You see, I have over 600,000. Let me say, keyboards. Keyboard. Keyboard piano. You see, over 20,000. So you can sit down here and type. You will be seeing different options. Now, you need something that is broad enough, very broad and also gives you an enough reasonable profit for each uh, sale you make. Like this one, if I make a sale, I get about 6% for a keyboard. It's something of $100. Uh, it's, it's a bit substantial. You make that decision for yourself. 
after checking it. So you check the profitability, you check the competition. I've already talked about competition. If something is highly competitive, the profitability obviously relatively has gone down. Then you also look at the passion of the niche audience. Let me give you an example. If you are promoting, between somebody who promotes a vacuum cleaner and somebody who promotes a musical instrument like, let's say, guitars, you don't have as much passion, equal passion. That's, that is in, a vacuum cleaner just helps somebody do his work better. So it is not something people are so passionate about. It makes people money quite, yes. I have a sight on this. But you can't compare it with something like guitar. It's a high passion stuff. Musicians are passionate about the music. Let's give you another example, something like golf. Golfers are passionate and they, they are very passionate. So if you put golf, you will see they have a lot of stuff. You see over 100,000 100, different things. Now that brings me quickly to the next point. You need to also pay attention to how wealthy your audience is. That's what this golf brings to note. Now, if you look at golf, they have a lot of different products. But let's see the price of their high-end products. People, poor men don't play golf. It's a rich man's game. And because it's a rich man's game, they spend quite a lot of money. Now, this is important for you. Because, for example, now, if you pick a niche that sells uh, things to a poor audience, you have already put yourself in trouble. So that's why sometimes some people will do a lot of hard work and they are not making money. Let me see. I picked. Now, this is. Did you see the amount? 17,000. This is. Look at this other one too. A golf simulator. 15,000. You can see the kind of crazy price. People buy expensive things. Look at. 14,000 to this thing dollars. Can you imagine? So these guys have money. Now, but don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that you only pick niches where people spend that high. Because let, let, let's, let me use the example of the, of the vacuum. If you calculate your profitability, if you calculate your profitability vis-a-vis -vis the volume, it still makes sense. Remember, your target here is just maybe to make $1,000 a month. So if you calculate, what do I need to make 1000 If I sell 100 in a, a month, I've already made uh, 2000 plus dollars. So it's something that is relative. So when I say... Look for a niche where people are, the audience is wealthy. Wealth also is relative. The, the relativity here is that you must ensure that you pick an audience where the people there spend money. They spend money and they can afford the things there. For example, now if you decide to sell the vacuum cleaners I'm promoting to the US market, if you decide to sell it to the Nigerian market, you know you're going to have a hard time. Because people say, ah, waiting, waiting, do we go use broom sweep, sweep them now. I go waste money. You go carry, you go carry a whole two hundred and seventy thousand. Go buy a vacuum cleaner. In fact, so I don't say, okay, we want vacuum. Make go buy Tokumbo. I know where they say Tokumbo for seven thousand. So trying to sell it to a Nigerian audience, for example, in the current situation, two thousand and nineteen January, might not be a good idea. So you see, you pick an audience that is wealthy, affluent audience, a, a niche that has an affluent audience. That's why most of the sites we build, we target the US market. We target the US market, Australia, UK, the affluent countries, so that you not get all hung up about uh, national pride and now start picking niches that are peculiar to people in Nigeria. Get that right. I sell to Nigerians, but I can tell you, for the time you put in to make a, a million naira, if you put the same time, to sell to the US market, you probably would have made 20 million. So get that right. Okay, so let's continue. It also helps massively if you are experienced in or passionate about the niche you want to pick. For example, I have been a musician, a professional, I've been a musician, I've been a music director, not just a musician, I've been a music director for over 30 years. I've been a musician, practicing musician for over 40 years. Yes, don't worry, I'm not a teenager. For those of you who thought I was a teenager, I'm not a teenager. So because of that, if I want to write about guitars, I can write about it in a way you cannot write about it if you've not played a guitar. I have taught people guitars. I also can write about keyboards in a way you can write about it. 
if you are not a keyboardist, if you've never played it. I've played and taught keyboard. I've taught people the trumpet. I've taught people a number of the drum set. I've taught people a number of musical instruments. We, we have a studio. My younger brother has a studio and we've worked in the studio and we know about things. There are things we, we know that we just take for granted. I teach voice. So let me say I'm talking about microphone. I can talk from it about it from a perspective that you can't, no matter how well you research, if you have not done, been there and done it. So it does help if you pick a niche that you are very experienced in or you are passionate about. Experience and or passion. Experience. Let's say you are a vet. A vet. It, uh, you do well selling uh, pet products because you have experience. You bring your experience to bear. Okay, if you're not if you're not highly experienced, but you are passionate about something, there are people who love music and they love musical instruments. They may not even know how to play, but they are interested in it. So that interest will help you do the research necessary and carry you through the times you need to do extensive research and get information. That's why you need to pick something you are passionate about. But if you can combine something you are passionate about with something you are also experienced in, wonderful like me. I'm experienced in music and I love music. So if I do stuff on it, it's a no brainer. It makes your work a lot easier. Okay. Now that we have talked about all these, we are entering the next stage. Keyword research. Because if you're going to pick a niche correctly, these things I gave you, the things I mentioned before are general rule of thumb. When I say general rule of thumb, I've given you a kind of general rule. Now we want to go about it scientifically that you're not going to be guessing. Because if you guess, you may fail. If you go about it scientifically, you won't fail. In fact, you can't fail. And that's what we want to achieve here with this lesson. We want you to lay a solid foundation that will help you get found. Don't forget, when we started initially, we say how to get found on Google. Now we are getting into the nitty gritty of it, how you can get found on Google. Because if you don't get found on Google, then you either have to spend money. Let me give you an example with this Dyson vacuum. You see the people on number one, number two, these people are found already. They will be making money from it. Using this vacuum cleaner stuff, cordless, you can say if the if the comp if the total stuff is two hundred and one thousand, I can um, predict that the number one gets about. Remember what we did before. If it's two hundred, if it is two hundred and one thousand, let's say thirty three percent goes to number one. Sometimes it's more depending on how other factors, which you might learn later, then times two hundred and one thousand. This person gets 66,000 thereabout, clicks to his site, and doesn't pay anything for it. It just happens every month. Every month. Isn't that awesome? That's about what this number one site gets. So, you see, if you, if you can get here, you will now build a site that actually earns you money passively. Because as people come to read, they go to your site. So whether you're sleeping or not, something is working for you. L let me show you an example of one of my uh, one of my stuff. It's not a site, but this one is a, what do you call it? It's a video. How to start mini importation. Some of you must have already watched this mini importation business in Nigeria. Let me see. Now. If you scroll down, you will see different people. You see all these people who are showing up here are getting results without having to do any advert. They are not doing any advert. They are just getting it for free. So if, if you rank number one here and it is 50 searches per month, you get it for free. Now, what if it is a keyword like, uh, like say, you are ranking number one for how to lose weight. That's 450,000 per month. So it pays to show up here. Now, we're going to use tools. I'm going to tell you the tools you're going to need, you're going to use so that you can come to a scientific conclusion about battles you can win, wars you can win, and niches you should 
pick. Because if you pick the wrong niche, you have already failed before starting. Don't, no, no, don't forget, the foundation of getting found is your keyword research. Your keyword research is what will determine which niche you pick. So let's get into it because we still have a lot to do. Tools we need. I'm showing you the tools you need. Keyword everywhere. You can come. If you don't, let me just make it easy for you. Just come to Google and type keyword everywhere. You see the first one, keywords everywhere.com. Open it. Let me close the other things. Let me close these ones. Keyword everywhere. Where that one is loading, let me show you the other tool we will need. Answer the public. Let's also go here and type answer the public. The site is actually answerthepublic.com. So you can type it in. Why that one is loading? Let's go to the next one. You go to Uber Suggest. Uber, as in the Uber you use. Ubersuggest.com. Ubersuggest.com. Uber and suggest.com. Let's open another window with ubersuggest.com. Why that is loading, we go to the next one. You go word counter. Let's just uh, go to Google extensions. Type in Google extensions because that thing is an extension. Google extensions. You see that? Enter. You can see, fine. Let me see. Google extensions. So let's go to Chrome store. When you go to the Chrome store, you, you search for word counter. OK, you can pick anyone, but this is the one I use. It's already installed. You can see it here word counter so you can pick one word counter and that's about that okay no it's not about that you still have another one please don't mind the raw language the guys give the name the, the funny name they gave the are two they call it keyword cheater so we we'll copy this remember you want to get that too the site is not loading okay so the next thing we do is we get uh, this keyword cheater. You can type it in Google and then just click and find it. Go to the site keyword cheater. That's the site. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So now we are going to. I just want to make sure I'm going to things sequentially. Okay. Okay, let me let's now now that we've got the tools, now let us do real research that will determine what we need to use. Now you have to install this. If you're using Chrome, you install for Chrome. If you're using Firefox, you install for Firefox then you get the free API key because when you install it, before you can use it, you have to put the API key. Now, that's not a lesson I'm going to teach now because it, I think that, that just waste my time. Just click get API key. You give them your email address. They will send it to you. When you send it to you and you are done installing, and you are done installing your, what's it called? The everywhere to you you'll be asked before you can use it to put your API key. Then when you, when, you, when you install it correctly, it will show something like this on your browser. This is a Chrome browser. It will show it. It is here. So that's basically that. So we can close this page. Now, for some reason, Uber Suggest is down. I don't know why. You may, you may have to come at another time of the day to, to use Uber Suggest. Because, but for now, let's just leave it. I can make do with the others where we start. Okay, so where do we start? You start with a general idea. 
That's how everything starts, isn't, isn't it? Now you start with a general idea. What do you know? Let me say you are a photographer or you, and you know a lot about photography. Let me try and get this thing while that's the page. It's finally loaded. Okay. While let's say you are a photographer or you have settled that the niche you are comfortable with is photography, you can now come here and say, if you're doing photography, you can start with photography and then type it in. Now, you notice that if you do your own search on your site without installing keyword everywhere, you won't be seeing this stuff I see. All these things are pulled by, uh, what's it called? Are pulled in by, uh, what's it called? Um, keywords everywhere. So, now if you pick this niche and say you want to do photography as photography and just come into it, this is crazily competitive. You cannot really do much because look at the number of Competing pages. This is 13 billion, billion, billion pages are competing. So you don't even, you shouldn't, it, it's not wise for you to what? Try to come for this kind of keyword. It doesn't make sense. But you can still operate within the photography niche. And that's what I want to show you. There's an angle. If you like photography, you're going to ask yourself, well, how can I come into it? You cannot come into it by picking an angle. Let me say, we come back to Amazon and type in, what do photographers use? Photographers use cameras, not so. Okay, so let's type in cameras. When we were doing the live uh, class, somebody said, a, a guy who, a model was in the house and he said, we should check uh, mirrorless cameras. So let's just type this in, mirrorless camera. So let's type that in, mirrorless cameras. Now, if you are into a niche or you lo love the niche very well, you obviously know a lot of things about the niche that you can pull out. So he told us mirrorless cameras. And we looked at it, wow, mirrorless cameras. Now, if you look at your, what's it called, Amazon search, you see mirrorless cameras is under digital cameras. So let's see more under the mirrorless camera. So let's say point and shoot cameras, DSLR cameras. So this has given us other options. So if I didn't want to do mirrorless cameras, I can also decide to do point and shoot digital cameras or DSLR cameras. If you know about them, you know about them. Now, we can come now to Google. We don't need to come to Google because this keyword everywhere shows us the search volume. It shows us that this one has about 12,000. Let me make it big so you can quickly see it. I make it big. See, this has about 12,200 monthly searches. Maybe I even make it bigger so everybody can see it very well. Okay, so mirrorless cameras has 12,200 monthly searches. Now, the competition is showing that the competition is one. So the competition is quite big. It is not an easy stuff to rank on. But now, so what do we do? Now, now that we have picked this, look at what I suggest you do. Since our focus is to make money, and so we are picking a small niche that is easily winnable. We are looking for a keyword that doesn't have a lot of competition, that is quite profitable, but many people are not paying attention to it. So what do we do? I will come to scroll down. And begin to look at the specific cameras that are listed under mirrorless cameras. So let me just say Sony Alpha A6000 mirrorless digital camera. That's quite a long one, isn't it? Let me come to Google and just do that search. Let's see what it gives us. Wow, it gives us pretty stuff. It gives us 880 searches per month. See it? 
it gives us 880 searches per month so that's an option so let's see does sony look at follow the my the process of my logic you ask yourself another question now now that this has shown let's cut this thing let's remove this okay i'll need to make this smaller so please you may need to i think i want you to see the, how everything pans out see what you are seeing here is the predictive test playing out on google so i've made it very big if i make it very small if i make it very small this is how it looks you can see this okay let me see if i make it a little bigger I want to leave it at 150 so that we can basically see things a little bit. So let's say I do this. I bring it down to this. Sony Alpha A6000. Did you see the number of search? I make it bigger so you can see it well. The number of search is 60,500 per month. Okay, let me enter it so that I can see the result. This is giving me, okay, this gives me 6,500, the competition. Did you see? So what do we do? What do we do? Let me close out alpha and reduce it only to alpha and see whether there are other alphas. There are other alpha cameras. So now, Pay attention to what I'm saying. We, this has shown us now that there are other alpha cameras, which means Sony alpha cameras, which means we can we can go narrow and focus only on Sony Alpha A6000, or we can go wide and focus on all Sony alpha cameras. You can see what I'm saying. Now, it all depends on how much time you have. Now, that's only one of the stuff. There's another thing you need to take note of. Sony also has other alphas. So that you started with Sony A6000 doesn't mean you must pick it. You can look for other options. Now, that's one point we've made. The other point we've made is, remember how we started this. We started this by searching for mirrorless cameras. Now, look at how many searches mirrorless cameras, which is the parent category. Mirrorless cameras has a grand total of 12,200. Can you see? That's 12,200. Sorry. It has 12,200 monthly search volume every month. But when we now came to one product, one of the products, which is the, uh, what's it called? The Sony, let me scroll down to it quickly. The Sony Alpha. You see, the Sony Alpha, which is just one product. We ran it on Google and discovered that Sony Alpha 6000 has over 60,500 searches per month. That's the search volume. Now, what does that tell you? That something is, a, is the parent category doesn't mean you should go for it because as you drill down, you may actually find bigger nuggets that have less competition. Now, the cost per click gives you an idea of how competitive a niche is, but that's not all. Okay, so let's, let's, let's check this again. Let me put this and put a dash, a, a space, I mean, and put A. It shows me a particular result. Let me check if we have other, other products that don't start with A. Let's start, try a B. Are you seeing Sony Alpha battery? Okay, let's try a C. Sony Alpha camera. Let's try a D. Sony Alpha DSLR. DL, DSLR. Let's try an E. Say Sony Alpha event. Let's try an F. Sony Alpha female. Let's try a G. Now, some of those things are rubbish keywords. Now, you can do this from now to tomorrow, but that's not going to be an efficient use of your time. That is where this keyword tool comes up. Useful. The keyword sheeter. Let's pick keyword sheeter. And then we come to that side page, keywordsheeter.com. And then type in Sony Alpha 
and then we click sheet keywords please don't be angry with this with us for using it's the name of the site so please we're not trying to be vulgar so now you see this keyword stuff starts pulling outward keywords that thing we were doing manually trying to do this manually doing this it's going to do it automatically for us why we just do other things you see it has put five thousand it has put six thousand it is uh, 600 and something keywords let it keep working now let look at what we'll be doing why that is working now come here come here let me close all this i don't need them again i come here and look at this bookmark my keywords everywhere click on it click on it remember the the keyword tool is working and click my favorites i want to make sure it's clean that nothing is there. okay it's clean nothing is there okay so let's go back see how far our keyword tool has done it has got us over a thousand so let's let's let it run for some time still let's let it run for some time now remember what we're trying to achieve we're trying to come to a scientific conclusion that this a keyword uh, a keyword is profitable when we find out that the keyword is profitable we decide ask ourselves whether that keyword is big enough to to form a niche if it's big enough to form a niche this this tool will show us as we do research under it and pull out results under it it will show us uh, the different keywords that come under and we'll be able to calculate and then see whether those keywords that are under it that we have created if you can get a number of, let's say 50 keywords that are easily winnable that are also on the same theme if we don't find we dump them and look for something else or from the results we have picked we can find something that say oh this is a good keyword we now pick it and run it through the tool again and see whether it can form a niche for us because it's easily winnable remember the idea is to get stuff that is winnable enter a market that is what easily winnable uh, uh, when we get to 2000 i will just pause it because i wouldn't want us to do this forever okay it has while it's breathing let's just let's let it get to 2000 okay okay it's 2000 let's stop the job it's not now now that you've stopped the job and i'm assuming you installed your keyword everywhere uh tool browser tool now what you need to do it this thing will show if you did everything correctly add all keywords we show here you click add all keywords now before you do that if you scroll through you will see that the keyword everywhere is giving you the results as the keywords are being found but it's not easy to sort this thing out here like this so what do we do we click add all keywords we're adding it to our favorite list so you see that's marked everything now we come to keywords everywhere how do we get there let me close it so that you don't miss any point any step if you miss any step it won't be good you see you click on the keywords everywhere keyword too when you click on it you see my favorite keywords it opens now that we've added those things you see those uh, what what we got here all these keywords have been exported into this page now pay attention we come here because we have up to 2,000 keywords, let's pick 5,000 entries. It has adjusted it accordingly. Then what do I do? We click, uh, let's sort it by volume. Now, good thing about this tool is that it gives us not only the global volume, it also give us, gives us the volume in the US alone. Why is that important? The US is are the greatest shoppers online. They buy the most. US people spend money and they buy things a lot. So the other ones will just be bonus. So we look at the US volume. See the US, you see the global. So based on that, you can now make a good call. So look at the volume. We have Sony Alpha 7, Sony Alpha, Sony Alpha 7. These are basically the same thing. Sony Alpha A6000, Sony Alpha Rumors. Let's begin to scroll down. You see different Sony Alpha 9, 
then look at the competition. You can look at the competition in the US and decide. Let's select the competition in the US and then see if we can find keywords that have some volume but very little competition. Did you see what I'm doing? You selected, you toggle display so that the competition will change. So that you start from the zero competition and you now start scrolling. Now, when you get, trying to see if you get any keyword that has what? Trying to see if you have a keyword that has volume. That's what we're doing. Let's keep scrolling. Fine. We're starting getting volume. I haven't we? Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to begin to check if those keywords are keywords that can make us money. So, you see, the first one we got was Sony Alpha YouTube. Now, if the person is looking for a YouTube video, Sony Alpha software. Do you sell the software? Do you have access to the Sony Alpha software? Let's see. Let's see. Sony Alpha software. So, so this is basically, let's see. If it's something we can sell. If it's something we can sell, you will see stores selling them. Buy upgrade, DP review. So it's not really something that we should go for. So we leave it and keep scrolling. Remember, we want to go for the winnables. So we are seeing the Sunny Xperia Alpha. Let me see. Now, okay, this looks like uh, Sony Xperia Alpha AliExpress. So it's like this one is not an Amazon. Let's confirm if it's an Amazon. If it's not an Amazon, for now, we will not sell it. Please take note of some of the points I'm making. If it's not an Amazon, then it's, it basically means it's not selling in the US. That's the truth. If it's not an Amazon, you may want to avoid it. Unless you have enough skills to determine that it's really, it really has a market. Because Amazon stocks everything that people buy in the US. Sony Alpha is showing. So Sony Alpha Xperia. That will be a risk doing this keyword. So let's remove it. So let's bypass it. Now, you also look at this. The keywords are quite, the volume is quite low. But it's not our problem. We are not bothered about that. We are just trying to find easy to rank stuff. Uh, so let's, if you find, this is New Zealand. This is DPR review. So let's, the keywords already tell me that they are not good for us. Now, Sony Alpha Lens Cap 55 millimeter. Let's come here and paste this and see. You can also just open, what do we do? Just open, uh, let's skip this and save somewhere here. And open, check it on Amazon. And also check it on Google. Oh, of course, this one is selling. So, and it, it has a small, has a small, what's it called? Small monthly search volume. It's not a problem. Because you remember, if it has somebody searching for Sony Alpha Lens Cap, he's a targeted person. So you can take note of that. So you can check it off. Sony Alpha Lens Cap. Okay, so let's keep going. We've got Sony Alpha Lens Cap. Sony Alpha Grip. Let's see. Sony Alpha Grip. I just want to make sure I am not doing what I'm supposed to do in the next section. Let just a minute. Let me make sure. Okay. Okay, which means uh, I'll do a recap on this when we get here. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me go back to where I was. Well, 
Okay. Let's stop there and continue. Okay. Sony Alpha Grip. It looks as if this one is another good one. Let's see whether it is on sale. I think it's also on sale. These are things you will just find out by doing your due diligence. So gradually, and it's in stock, 15 left in stock. How much is it? 84. Are you, are, are, are you, are you getting the hang of what we're doing now? So let me just say, I, the first one we got was uh, Sony Alpha, what, um, what did we get that, uh, okay, 59 millimeter cap let me just do this and paste this let's select this then the next one we checked was sony alpha six a six thousand grip now also paste this so to since i didn't do it in initially i put this okay then um, let's keep scrolling Sony Alpha app. Sony Alpha app. Let's see. I know this, this might look like a lot of work for you, but my brother, my sisters who are watching this, do not cut short this part. Please, somebody's calling me. Maybe I have to. Let me pause this and come back. Okay, I am back. So let's continue. Now that we have seen, I've picked a Sony iPhone app. Let's check it. Whether it's something that has a market, whether they sell it. Uh, I think it all depends on you though. It's not everything you write on your site must not be something that gives you money. If, if you can provide value for the people and then it, it will also help them like you. So. I am, I am not saying you must only write keywords that have products to sell. You will look at it. Does this serve the people? Will it make them feel good about me? If it will make, you feel, make them feel good about you and it's within the theme, you might go ahead and do it. But remember that what we're doing at this moment is we want to see if we have enough easy to rank keywords that have some small volume. The, the, size, the volume does not matter much. You get my point. So that's what we're doing at this stage. So let's leave this one for now. Let's still leave it there. We might have to come back to it later on or we might drop it. So uh, let's check this one. Are you seeing the process? This one is a, 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 comp a, a comparison. Now look at why comparisons, take note, comparisons are very powerful. Why are they very powerful? They're very powerful because once you do versus, it knocks off all the what's it called, all these all the uh, sites that sell, that all the shopping sites, like Amazon and Co. But that's not only that; it gives you the opportunity to sell two products at the same time. Because somebody who is selling Sony Alpha A7 or Nikon D800 is 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 trying to choose between these and all this. So whether he chooses Alpha A7 or Nikon D800, the way we'll teach you to structure your site, you will make money any way it goes. So that increases your earning capacity by two for that particular keyword. So versus keywords are very powerful keywords if they, are, if they make sense in the niche you are targeting. So that one already works. It already works. It has 10 globally. It doesn't have in the US. Let's still continue. Uh, we we'll go for Sony Alpha versus Panasonic Lumix. Let's see. Okay, this also makes sense. So how you can just check is you Amazon. I, I don't want to go through this because I know Amazon already has this. So that's why I'm not checking some of those things. Okay, so we go again. Now, avoid keywords like Amazon UK because this person is typing, searching to go to Amazon UK. You get my point. So, and if you see people searching for this with 
with uh, places you might do well to avoid them now this long exposure looks interesting it might not be something that you 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 will write to make money right away but it's something that will help you it's something that will help you get uh, build show your skill or show your expertise in this so you see sunny alpha long exposure that maybe somebody wants to learn how to make long exposure so long exposure photography is my absolute favorite way to see the world maybe long exposure night shots with blah 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 so if you want to teach people this one can help you teach people how to do long sunny alpha long exposure and at the end of it you say if you want to buy a sunny alpha long uh, uh, camera for that to get this kind of shot click here so you may be surprised some people who will go through your tutorial on how to achieve long exposure with sunny alpha we end up buying so this one is not a direct uh, selling keyword but if you handle it well and give a good tutorial a good tip or a tips video a tips uh, article people will go get this so this uh, keyword is also a very good keyword type that's why i'm going through these keywords one by one it's not as if uh, I'm, I'm, going, you, you, uh, I'm going to be doing this all through, but just understand, I'm going through it one by one so as to help you pick the very best easy to rank keywords. I don't know whether this is a product or a mystic, so let's just find out. These are the simple things you would do to find out. If it was a mystic, you would know. Okay, it's not English. So that answers that. I won't, I'll pass that. There's a, this thing. Alpha A dot test, I3 test, let me see. So this, this is what you would do. And if you get enough volume, Sony A73 test. So if you, this one also is a good stuff. The test, and it has if you know you you have you you have access to the test results for this you can pick it if you don't if any keyword you know you cannot deliver on don't pick it so let's keep going sony alpha 35 3500j now you come here and search now this looks like a pain stick sticking process but this is just one of the steps okay so this one is this this one also goes so you keep picking when you have when you are done picking look at why this is very beautiful hmm? if you pick 100 let's say you pick 100 keywords okay let me, let me just scroll down to see if i like you see this keyword now is for has 450 140 globally huh? let's say this keyword I, I end up getting up to 100 keywords. Okay, this is not English too, so thank God I checked. That's why we check. But let's say at the end of this search, we get 100 keywords that just have at least 20, 20 searches per month. It might not look much, but if you multiply 100 times 20, you got 2,000. Keywords that are easy to rank, and don't forget that. In, a, in this kind of niche, if out of the 20 people, let's just show you something. Mm, let's see Canon EOS so that you get what I'm trying to explain. Please pay attention. You want to see the cost of one of these cameras. So if you get 2,000 visitors to your site in a month and you, have, you do the other part of this, uh, at, uh, of this project correctly, and now one you get from one one of these one of these uh, uh one camera sells or oh, one of these cameras sells for some of them sell as much as a thousand dollars some two thousand some more let me pause this thing and fix this matter please okay i paused it so that i rectify my internet connection issues now let's look at the cost of this eos and eos has a lot of different cameras this one goes for 585 this one goes for 474 this one goes for 799 if you want to get the higher end prices you can check uh, high to low 
and you see you see this one this one is as high as this amount now i'm not saying you will sell those at, at this height but i'm just showing you that even if you are just getting you're getting the ones for 500 and you get six percent on 500 six percent times 500 dollars that gives you about 30 dollars if out of the 2000 people who visit your site in a month you are able to send just 75 of them to buy and they buy you've made 2200 so don't believe too that's why i'm trying to explain to you that many people when they come into this thing they they do not come with the right strategy and they end up losing opportunities that they would have had to win are you, are you getting the point now so you see these keywords are not big look at this one it's small but they are heavy stuff you just do your due diligence make sure that the keywords are not rubbish keywords because there are a number of rubbish keywords you you can see uh, so you do your research let me quickly scroll through and see you'll be searching once you see anything like this one now it still has zero competition it has zero competition it has zero competition let me see whether this actually has zero competition or whether it's a real stuff now in order to speed up the process so that you will not be going back and forth okay juza is not let me see juza photo what is juza photo you find out what it is if okay juza photo is a site it may be a popular site that somebody was searching for so i could just remove that and i check this one i can check this one you see how i am deliberately taking you through the process now i'm going this one too is a, is a real camera it has 20 so look at what i'm going to do i'm going to pause this video now and i will quickly try to select all those ones that have very low competition look at how i know by checking here those ones before anything that is lower than anything that is lower than uh, let me say let's get everything that is lower than five five and below let's pick all of them um so i'm going to pause when i'm done i will come back okay i have selected a number of stuff so let me just uh, the things i've selected i could just come and say I could just uh, copy everything because you see the, the process I went through I, I, if, I, if I was selecting them manually I could just pick them and take them to an Excel sheet but actually it's better for you to just copy everything and uh, put it in an Excel sheet and then do it at your convenience so what I'll just do is I'll go to Excel sheet I've already selected a number of keywords and if you ask me based on what I selected Just a minute. Based on what I selected, the keyword is quite good enough for me. The, I could do something on Sony Alpha. And I picked this easy to run keywords. I picked this easy to run keywords. Let me come here and do the volume, US volume first. Largest to smallest. That's what I'm doing first. Then I'll pick and I'll start with competition. Do you see rumors don't give you money? You can just scroll down and just anyone you see you like, like, oops. I'm concentrating on the US side. That's another way to do it. You see, the way I, the way I was doing it on the site is not very efficient. It was while I post, while I post and was doing it the other way. I just said, why not just use Excel? Excel, I can just arrange things. And depending on your skill on Excel, you can actually do it faster. So look at, I'm start, I've started picking keywords now. So I can actually uh, do something to mark all the keywords that I like. I just, let me just put an X to them. I put an X. I know that those X, I added it. You see, I come here again. If this is a keyword, I pick it and I repeat that process until I pick enough. Already without doing much and based on what I did in the other place, I have already seen that this is a massively good keyword for me to target. So 
I cannot say this niche is good. I go for Sony Alpha. Sony Alpha cameras. Now, if I go for Sony Alpha cameras, then my work has just begun. Let me just clean this. Remember, I'm teaching you. If I, if I see that the keywords that are, are easy to rank are plenty, that's good to go. Now, does that mean you're not going to let out work on the difficult keyword, the bigger keywords? You will. But remember, we are picking battles we can easily word, win. We are picking battles we can easily win. So what are the, what, what are our criteria? We pick volume first. That's the first criteria. We need something that has substantial volume. After it, it has shown it has substantial volume. The next thing is we pick what? Competition. Then we start. The volume is good. The competition is what? Low. We start going downwards. As you go downwards, by that singular action, you ensure you don't pick difficult stuff. Like now, if rumors were to be a product, this would have been a hot find, but it is not. So don't be, don't look for, don't wait until you find very big uh, volumes. You just look at this US, the US competition. Just keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down. This one makes sense. Wow. 320 Sony Alpha A6 versus in the US and it just has 0.07. <laughs> I, I can't resist the temptation. Let's just tempt. Let's just come here and check. If you come here and check now, difference between this and this. Now, this is going to be a comparison site. Let's see. Wow. This is something you can win. But let's see whether you can how easy it will be for you to win it that will take us to the next part of our stuff i hope you if you don't understand what i have done so far call me or send me a message but or watch it again that the, basically what i've done here is i make sure i i search for keywords that that when i calculate my total volume if i calculate my total volume here on the us side not this side and I check the ones that are less than 0.5 in competition, I should have at least, at least 2,000, 2,000 total volume. But ideally, try to go for 10,000, 10,000 total volume. But I, I just say 2,000 because this niche, I don't, you don't need too much. And because of my own skill, I don't need too much. But if you want to be safe, Make sure you can get at least 2,000 monthly searches for the very easy to rank keywords that are less than 0.5 competition. If you calculate the total cumulative of everything you've got, 20, 20, 20, if you get a total of 120, that's 2,000. If you have got up to search, you are good to go. Are you getting my point? Now, it brings us to the next part of this uh, video which is i'm still going to maybe touch some of these keyword tools before we continue but it brings us to how to fast track your site's progress now having picked a keyword like in this case we picked this and we saw it has this before i finally go writing i have to come here paste it in and then open open each of them don't don't bother about this that's the one we opened. That's the number one. And then open each of them. Leave, forget about the YouTube, YouTube videos too. Open each of them. Open, open at least the first five, the, the top five videos. Now, let's go back. Open the top five videos. So what are you looking for here in doing this? What we're looking for here is you're looking at the type of site that is ranking number one, number two. In this case, this site is not very thick on content. In fact, I can come to this site. They have done research for me. And I'll now, instead of just placing it in a tabular form, I'll make it content, as in text. And I write a lot. Let's look at the total volume. And I'll explain to you why this is important. 
we, we have learned from experience that Google generally prefers, ranks longer content higher. Google ranks longer content higher. So if all things being equal, your own content is longer, Google will rank you higher. This one is 2,098. And that is including the tables and all this shopping related stuff, which are not really counted as, uh, will not really count as content by Google. But let's say this one has 2,000. Then we come here uh, and look. Let's look at copy, highlight all the text, okay, and go to the top. Okay, so I right click that my count keyword count that my word counter tool is what I'm using now. See, it has 749. It's showing you that if you can write a three, let's say the first one is 2000 words, this one is 749. If I can write a 2000 word article, I'm already winning. All of that is being equal. Okay, then let's check the third one. I'll close this too. 10 key differences between the D's and A3. Now you see this person did a better job of attracting Google by, instead of doing what this site did, this site placed them comparison in table. It's good, you can still do a table, but he picked each of the points, or he or she picked the points, and made it into a full-blown article, and said 10 key differences between this and that. So let's see how long this content, how many words, because this thing matter. So let's just see, this is about, count these words, 1,395. Are you seeing already? If I come and do extensive research, using the content these people already have, do extensive research, and I'm able to come up with 3,000 words, I am in poor position to win this keyword. Let's check the last one. This last one is basically thin on content. It's just a chart. So this one, there's basically no competition. But we can come and use the data they have provided to, to run. They have already put the comparisons for you. So you can now compare A to B, B to C, and then create a deep, con a deep content, long. Google prefers long content. The longer your content, I'm not saying just writing trash. The longer your content writing stuff, the better it is for you to rank. Like this one's too, you see the content is thin, it's just basically sales. So this keyword is highly winnable. So you see 880 searches per month, the competition very low. And as if that was not enough, it also shows even other keywords that are related, other keywords that are related that you may also rank for. So this one, it's a good keyword to target. Now, more importantly, it's a good niche. And that shows that if I do Sony Alpha, I have enough to, to build on. Now, now understand, I said how to fast track your, what's it called? How to fast track your site's progress. Now, let me tell you something. If, like we said, if this, all other things being equal, your site has on a particular topic, 3,000 words, where others have 1,000, 5, 2,000 and less, you already have an advantage over them. There's another thing that gives you an advantage, and that is how tightly focused on a theme your site is. Now, let's say that this site, some, one person registers a site called mirrorlesscameras.com, and he writes on mirrorless cameras. Another person has a site that is on Sony Alpha A6000. Let's say I register a site, Sony Alpha. I can, let me, it must not be Sony Alpha 80,000, that is the name, but the theme of the site is on, I'm focusing only on Sony Alpha A6000. Are you getting my point? The person who has a site that is Sony Alpha A6000, 
writing on this and writing on all things Sony Alpha A6000, you can't probably compare with, you can't compete with him because he's focusing on a tightness. So Google looks at the theme of his content and say, this person is talking only about Sony Alpha A6000. Now, while we're doing that, I want to go back and say, no, I don't want to write on Sony Alpha. I want to write on Sony, only Sony Alpha A6000. Why did I say so? Because I found one good keyword, one good keyword that has low commission and it's as much as 800, 880 per month. So uh, rather than bother myself about taking everything out, let me just go for that one alone. Please bear with me. I'll come reload this page so that it will wipe this out. I'll come here. I will uh, delete all keywords so that the, this uh, tool is free again. And then I come, I come to the tool, it is reloaded, and I paste Sony Alpha A6000. Now, there's something I want to do. I want to, you can, we can do, we can do the, what's it called? We can do the keyword research for Sony Alpha A6000 alone. That would be good. But I, I have already seen that Sony Alpha A6000 has low hanging fruits. That thanks to this uh, keyword. When I did it, I saw it has that. Now, this has also, also triggered my interest to say, okay, let me do a keyword research on Sony Alpha A6000 versus as my seed keyword. And I put it here and I type versus Sony Alpha A6000 versus. Because why am I doing this? If I can build a site that is wholly focused on Sony Alpha A6000 alone, it will rank faster than a site that is focused on Sony Alpha. Knowing that Sony Alpha has A6000, A6300, A that, many other sub uh, cameras under it. So if I pick just one camera and make my site, I want to make my niche site a tight niche and make it the main focus. I'm only really talking about Sony Alpha A6000. So I am doing the versus. With the versus, I will be able to check. Let me stop the job whether I have enough. I add all the keywords to this. I reload this to, it will now show me, fine. So let's go. It's 500 now because, okay, now let's pick the volume in US and do it again, toggle it again. It has shown us, now let's look at the competition in US. I want to go with the lowest competition and I take it again. Sorry, volume, this. Now, are you seeing that Sony Alpha A6000? We got it. We got another one, Sony Alpha Manual. We don't need that. Sony Alpha A6000 video. If we're doing a video, we can pick that, but that doesn't qualify. We come Sony Alpha a6000 versus A510. This is sweet. Sony Alpha A6000 versus A5000. Wow. Wow. We've already got us a powerful stuff here. This one has more than enough for us. More than enough. I don't even need to bother again. I'm tempted to just write a site on this already. So, with the Sony Alpha versus, with the versus alone, we can see that we probably have, we can probably get hundreds, over 10,000 search volume, targeting low value, uh, low volume keywords that are high intent. Once you see anything doing versus, you know that the person is about making a purchase decision. And then if I, if, if like for this niche now, as I search and I see stuff like this, it gives me ideas. Since you know about camera, I say Sony Alpha A6000 lenses. Because if you know about cameras, you know that people who do cameras do a lot of lenses. So look at the results you are getting and use it to what? Get more stuff. Sony Alpha versus Canon this. I didn't even pick it. That one is zero. Totally. So you keep searching. You keep going, scrolling down until you are done. 
This one has so much. So I can virtually tell you without mincing words that this keyword is a winner. Now, let's check through our criteria. How to fast track. Let's leave that one. I'll come back to that. You said use long tail keywords. What are long tail keywords? Long tail keywords. Uh, if you see Sony Alpha, Sony Alpha is a key a keyword phrase. Sony Alpha A is a longer tail. Sony Alpha versus is a much longer. Sony Alpha A6000 versus this is even a much more longer tail keyword. So this is a long tail keyword showing you. Now if I also remove this again, you can see more of the long tails. Do you see? These are also longer tails. Sony Alpha A6000 lenses. So the, the longer the tail, that's, let's call the long tail keywords, the low hanging fruits which is what I've been doing since. Keywords, most of them are usually long. They usually have combos. If not that we are doing, let me use another example, like how to lose weight, which is what we started with. This is already a long tail, but you cannot say it's as long as in two weeks. This one is a longer tail. Then if I still put it this in, you see that with at home, it's a much longer one. If I put a space here and still do at home without exercise, you see that one is much longer. You see that the longer you spread, the easier it is for you to rank for a keyword. So, and it's also the easier it is for you to target exactly what the intent of the searcher is. Like in this case, you know, this person is wants to lose weight, but he wants to lose it in two weeks. He wants to do it at home. He wants to do it without exercise and without diet. So he has given you virtually your article. So if I want to write an article like this, I can say how to lose weight in two weeks without exercise. I can write on each of these aspects and I've already got it. So that gives you an advantage. So this is a massively long tail. But now long tail doesn't mean that the keyword has to be as long as this, like we saw in the Sony, Sony Alpha A6000. You see, when you put versus this is a long tail, but it's not necessarily short or compact. And now remember that we did not just pick it like that. We picked it based on what? The search volume. And you can see, if you look at this part, you see this one is already giving us a lot of options. So this is a very good niche to target. And this long tail shows us that this person is comparing. So we can do in-depth stuff for the person while uh, for the people who search, deliver value to them and still get a lot of results, good results from what we are doing. I hope this is clear enough. So let's quickly look at the other things we need to pay attention to. Now, the other one I was dodging before was expired domains. Now, when you start a domain, when you start a domain, you open a website. Google, Google has something it calls the sandbox. So Google does not begin to give you a high ranking immediately. Google takes some time before it starts giving you ranking because it says, I don't trust this site. It's new, this domain, I don't know what it's about. But if you buy a domain that somebody has owned and has left to expire, remember I told you about the site I used to own, Quality Insurance for Less, that I let after eight or nine years, I let it go. It was an authority site. It had built authority. Then when I let it go, somebody else quickly bought it as an expired domain. And when he started building his own site, he was not going to start afresh. That is, he already had the benefit of the authority I had already built. So it wouldn't go through what we call the Google Sandbox. Why? Because Google says, oh, this one already has a history. Are you getting my point? So that's why one of the ways you can give your site an advantage. Remember the way how to fast track your site's progress. The major way to give yourself a head start is to get the foundation, foundation right, which is picking the right keywords and picking the right niche. If you get enough keywords on the same focus team, that is a niche. You make it a niche. Go, you, you go for things that are easy to win. That's the first stage. Then to fast track it, you, you, you buy expired domains. Now there's a way to do that, which is not 
the subject of this lesson. But if you go to, when you are ready and you want to get an expired domain, you can contact me and I will help you buy one. You can expect to spend as little as $200 to as much as $100,000. It all depends on the level of authority that the website has and how, easy, how quickly you were to be the first person to snap it. Because some guys are domainers. They just wait for domains to expire. They buy it and they sell it at premium price. Like my domain, Quality Insurance, maybe the person who bought it might have bought it for over $10,000. Because at the time, that site was worth over 100000 So, But if he was the first person to find it, he would just pay at rock bottom price. But if the number of competition who people who wanted to get it were many, somebody who wanted to sell it might sell it at an auction. And so the price will go high. So the price for an expired domain can be as little as the cost of buying a brand new domain if you are the first person to find it or as high as whatever the person who got it wants to sell it okay now after expired domain we said long tail keywords which is what we have been doing all the while easy low hanging fruit keywords the third thing is low competition now there are every every niche you have has industry leaders if you do like this sony alpha review and you see something, somebody like uh, digital photography in number one, you should as well run away from it. If digital photography is number one, uh, another top site is number two, and number third site is number three, number four, the top spots have been taken over. When you just do your manual research and see them that they are ranking number one, you might give yourself a break and just move out. Furthermore, if you open their articles like I opened that time and see that their articles are also heavy, that they wrote long articles. You might leave and go to somewhere else. But let's look at this one. We, when we start this, we said that most of them were just using comparison graphs and tables. They were not necessarily writing. So you know it's something you can easily rank for. Now let's go to the next criteria. Something you should do what that um, you should have. I think I've explained to you how you can find that industry leaders. Do your research. Okay, I didn't explain that. How do you know your industry leaders? One of the easy ways is this is cameras. These are cameras. So you can come here and just type in camera. You don't need to be told. All the sites that show up in the top 10 here are the big guys. You can also do things like camera reviews. Once it loads, you know that use the top level keywords, those keywords that have heavy volumes. Like in this case, I have shown us examples. You pick, let's pick DSLR camera. You see, all these keywords, all these, all these are the leaders. Now, don't mind some of the results you are getting here. The results you are getting here is because I'm in Nigeria. Don't forget that. Don't make the mistake to forget that. Let me show you. We are focusing on the US market. So Nigerians are not necessarily competing here. So let me let me type out DSLR camera. Now I want to show you this because if you do this in Nigeria or anywhere in Africa, the result might mislead you. So what you do is you type in and GL is equal to us and press enter let me let me show you what let me type it in a place you can see what you type is type in the space and this and gl is equal is is equal to not no space us and gl equals us and then press enter at the end you type it you put it at the very end of the string url string you see what i did and let me let me make it bolder let me see if it will bold in that side. Oh, it doesn't affect that side. Sorry. So this place is and you put the and GL is equal to US and it will now show you the real results. This is not the Nigerian result. This is not the US result. So you can see, you check. Look at the big boys. Now this one still has a lot of the stores, but check the big guys. These are digital trend. Look at the information sites. And once you see them, you can know, if you see too many of them, you need to avoid. Now you can also check things like photography. I'm just using general examples for you. Photography. 
it's still going back to Nigeria. So we just scroll back and go to NGL, just add it, and GL is equal to US. I need to change the result. Now, it might not change the result because Google is thinking photography. If somebody is looking for photography in Nigeria, he's looking for somebody around to do his photography work for him. But the basic point I'm trying to make is once you, before you pick a keyword, check physically. Now, sometimes you will see merchant sites. Don't let that bother you. Merchant sites shouldn't bother you. Like Amazon, let that, those ones not bother you. What should bother you is sites that do review, that write content check them and check the size of their content you get my point if you do that you should be safe okay now i've told you how to look for industry leaders if you stay long enough in a niche you will know the industry leaders and you know to avoid them okay so the next thing you need to take note of is we have said that write more in-depth articles than the top five longer more words so if all of them are writing the highest you've seen in the top five wrote 2,000 words. Go for 3,000. If they wrote 3,000 and you want to rank, go for 4,000, 5,000. It just works. Okay. Now, check all in title. There, is, there are different search uh, strings you can use. Let's use this, our Sony this. If you look up here, you will see the competition. It will tell you that, let me use this one, that has results. Um, what was the keyword that we liked? We said, uh, let me use real examples. We said, okay, this was it. This keyword, remember, this one is still taking us to ensuring that you, didn't, you pick a winnable battle. You pick a battle, you can win. So this one is 880 searches per month you can see it now now you will see here underneath about 1.89 million that one one million eight hundred and ninety thousand these are the competing pages now before you before you lose heart this might not be the true competition for you to find your true competition look at what you put type in all okay let me make it big again type in all in title and put a colon by typing all in title and a colon before this you are trying to look for pages that we are optimized to rank for this keyword, keyword phrase. You are such, by adding this, it means that you will only see pages that have this, all of it in their title. Now, when, when we get to writing an article to rank, what we're doing is a foundation. When we get to the video, where we'll teach you how to write articles to rank in the top 10 of Google. You understand what is called SEO optimization. And one of the things you do is any keyword you want to rank, you put it in your title, in the title of your site. Let me, okay, let me not show you an example because we're not teaching writing now. And I don't want to make this video much longer than it is. It's already long. Did you see what just happened? We have about 362 results. If you remove this all in title and just paste this, you see, you, are, you think you are competing against 1.89 million people. But put the all in title and it changes the entire game. You have 362 results only. Now, for those of okay, before I go to something else, let's quickly scroll down to the bottom. Now, if you think that's even, you are competing against 200 and 362 people, you are wrong. Let's find that. Let's go to the very last page under this place. Go to the last page of the result and you may be shocked. Did you see what we're having? What happened now? Okay, it's showing me four. Now look at what it's showing. 
did you see? In order to show the most, let me make it bold. In order to show the most relevant results, we have omitted some entries very similar to the 40 already displaced. So displayed. What does this tell you? Even though the number at the top here originally was telling us 3,362. By the time we scrolled to the last page, it showed look that was it was not even up to that. You're only competing against 39 other pages. And look at all of them. You see, all of them have what? The exact have this Sony Alpha A6000 versus in their titles. Can you see? All of them have it in their titles. Even some of them don't even have it. Okay, this one has it somewhere. If you if you check, if you check it, that's why it has Sony Alpha versus this. All of them must have it in their title. All of them. If you let me open it so that you confirm that it has it in the title. Now. So, which means in this case, you are competing against 39. And most of the 39, let's go back to the, let's enter again so that we can go back to the page so that you really see your true competition. Do you see? So, Sony A versus this versus that. And you see, it had a subtitle where it was included. That was why it showed. This is actually what made it show, not this one. So look at the page we are actually competing against. Okay, so, wow, my, con my connection. Google thinks it, I'm a robot. Let us reload it. So I really, okay. Now we, it's showing 321 results again, which we know is not true by what we did. In case anybody wants to think I'm doing abracadabra, let me do it real time again. You see it? 321, it has dropped. Now scroll down and come to the end. Click this page, you see it has nothing. You go to the fourth page. You see it is showing us 39 results. Now, in case some of people might be doubting whether this actually works. Uh, before, uh, let's open, let's copy, open another page. Let's open another page. And, okay, let me do all in type two. But let me do it for... A heavy, a heavy keyword like DSL, DSLR camera, camera, and you see, let's type in. You see, it will still produce a lot. You see, your all in title is still one point four thirty million. Are you seeing the point? So the all in title stuff. Let me remove it. You see the result. The result is one hundred ninety six million. You put the in all in title for this all in type 2 and it shows you the true number of sites you are competing against in this case you are competing against about 1.43 million you get the point so let's go back to that other place for, you, for us to see the true competition of this one remember we have seen the number of pages we are competing that is 39 pages so you disregard this now let's look at the pages ranked top and begin to open them let's see this open remember Open, open, this one is even a forum, open, so let me see the one that has loaded already. Now what are we trying to do? We are trying to look at the, the number, the, the, um, the amount of content, the volume of content on these pages. Okay, let's do the one that has opened first, oh, what happened, okay, the one that opened first. Let's scroll. You see, virtually it is clean on content. Virtually it has no content. This is basically a sales site. So you'll see, if you write in-depth quality on this, you're already spanking this site. So you understand, I'm showing you why, what we calculated, what we showed you, that that's, that keyword has 880 and almost zero volume. It's true. Now look at this. Virtually no content. They are only comparing the, the specs. You see, virtually no content, no article, no content on this thing. Let's see. So virtually, they are just doing comparisons without writing text. Google consumes text. 
text t e s t s so you see this one that other one too has now this one is a forum so you can easily win this is not an article it's people discussing so you see you can easily win this then finally you see this one too virtually the top dogs you see the content here is quite low quite low what i mean by content test here is quite low so if you see pages that have little text like this so let's, let's let me just copy from here from here because that's the text you see up to here let's see Listen, less than 500 379 so you see this was another easy to win stuff very easy to win so you get the point all in title helps you find out your true competition then let's see it gives you a clearer idea of the competition don't let the numbers deceive you like i said and i showed you how to find out um what how competitive a keyword is now you can sit back and do more extensive research use this method to do a research for any keyword uh, any niche you want to target go to the video repeatedly if you have a question you ask me then from there you can pick a niche when you pick a niche you can pick easy to win profitable keywords and then you make it work for you now some of i opened uh, some other pages that we didn't use at all now let's show you what we do with some of them before i go because you might need to use them now let's assume you have eventually settled for starting a site on sony alpha a6000 then you can come to this site answer the public and paste this will bring questions and options for you to 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 look at to bring out a lot of questions and a lot of options for you to look at let me export this let me copy this and export this because i think i like it i mean by the time you'll be before you could say jack robinson i might have built a site on this let me not do this let me not waste your time i can do this on my own i wanted to delete all the keywords so that i can use this one so you know we pasted sony alpha a6000 now what this thing does is that it's going to bring out all the questions people are asking now this will help you write articles too articles that are easy to win articles that add value to your to your customers like if i'm writing on uh, sony alpha a6000 I can have an, a frequently asked questions section. In that section, I could ask, um, I could ask, is, uh, what's it called? Is Sony Alpha A6000 a DSLR? You see all the questions here. Is Sony Alpha A6000 full frame? Those are questions you can answer and you will enrich the experience and make your content even longer. Like you can see the questions. Is Sony Alpha with data you, instead of visualization i click get data you can now come and see the sony alpha a6000 shoot you see the different questions how to use this now you must not use all of the questions but it gives you a whole range of questions you can use and with this uh, keywords everywhere it now shows you the monthly search volumes of each of the keywords so what do i do let's also pick data here I can come at the end here and just click add keywords when i add keywords when i click add keywords it will reflect here when i reload that is that now the uber suggest it has actually been down today but i don't know whether it will now be open let's copy our sony a sony alpha a6000 because i really need to show you all the tools and how important each of them is sorry i delete let me delete this and let me paste let me paste it
let me come here again and pick Sony Sony Alpha A6000. Sony Alpha A6000. Come to Uber Suggest. Okay, this something is wrong here. Let me reload this page. I'll pause and reload it so that uh, just a minute. I will pause and come back. Okay, we are back. Um, I had to had to pause so that uh, you I won't bore you with looking at this my page load. Now you see I've typed in Sony Alpha A six thousand. Now keyword overview Sony Alpha A six thousand. Search engine volume S E of difficulty. That's that. But remember that we want to see this. We want to check. You saw when we did this is on uh, Uber Suggest. Uber Suggest. We want to do another keyword that is Sony Alpha. Uh, this thing versus that. And we, we set it at for United States. It has other countries, but I prefer doing the research with the United States. Now, the Sony Alpha A6000, the SEO difficulty is 48. And they said this keyword is completed. They say 42 chance, 42 percent chance you can rank it in the top 20. So, this uh, tool, this tool allows you to do this research and it shows you keywords that are close to that. Now, in this case, it has already shown you Sony Alpha A6000 versus this as one of the uh, uh, other keyword ideas. And look, search, search engine difficult, estimated competition in organic search. Let me open it so you can read it clearly. So look at, uh, oof, it can't show here if I erase it. So let me return it. But I'll read what it says there to you. It says, uh, this says, estimated competition in organic search. The higher the number, the more competitive. The higher the number, the more competitive. Okay, I just want to make sure my stuff was still recording. Now, the higher the number, the more competitive. So, this is very competitive. This is less competitive. This is less competitive. This is less competitive. These ones are easy. This one is also easy. We can now download. Now I'm showing you two. So now, if you want to do the one by the page by page analysis, this one will be for Sony Alpha A6000. You can check here and open all the pages. It shows you the pages ranking, and it will show you that for the US. You can open each of them and see how how they pan. That, that was the stuff I was doing manually here when I open each of the pages. Okay, so let, let's go back. I, I, I want to I want to export these keyword ideas, all of them, these ones, because they will give me a lot of easy to rank. So if you don't want to go through that hassle of doing this, you can come and do this and look at the search engine difficulty. Anything that shows green shows you it's easy to rank. So let's view all the keyword ideas. And let's export. I can uh, let me export them to a CSV. That's it there. Later, let me open it so you can see. I export it to a CSV and I open it up. I can just simply come here and click. Um, before I do that, let me go and anything that has zero, I remove it. So anything that doesn't have. Like all these ones, I remove all of them. I delete them. So anything that doesn't have any search, I remove it. And not take note that this is in the US. So now I come up and I look at the search engine search difficulty. And I come here and I do my sort, I sort and filter. I go from smallest to largest. That's that. So I can see all the easy to rank keywords. Some, some of them are useless keywords and I just come re remove them like this is useless. These are useless. 
basically. You can come, I do my stuff, remove, and after I'm done, I can see heavy keywords that are useful, but are still anything under 30 is considered, anything that is 30 and below is considered easy to rank. In fact, just start from the lowest and start ranking and start uh, writing your stuff and you're good to go. That's basically how that this tool works. And if we wanted to do a bit more, I want to do a bit more, I can go and now paste in this uh, versus this one and watch it do its stuff. Now remember that we, while this one is loading, remember we did stuff here with this uh, answer the public and then we added the keywords. Look at the keywords we added. Look at the keywords we added. It had a lot of rubbish keywords in it. So we can as well just check this and remove these ones. Remove these ones. They are good keywords. These are good keywords. And then delete all the selected. We delete all the selected keywords. We've done that. So we now have a clean set of keywords. Now this one will bring up, uh, let's set it. Now we can also again do the competition thing in the US and do the competition thing here and begin to check anything that is below. So and look at the search volume. So all I simply do is I will come up here and uh, extend the entries because I don't know how many keywords it has so it should be it should be able to handle everything okay this one has 577 rules I just copy I copy it it's already copied I come to that first one where I have been having this stuff Oops. let me just scroll down quick quickly we have quite a lot here. So, oh, scroll down quickly. Oh, I'm, it's like I'm getting fatigued a bit. So, I come here and also paste this. So, I can later sort all of them. All I need to do is. I remove this. I know this is this can be very this process can be stressful, but please, if you want to make a success of your niche site, I beg you to. I'll beg you to. Uh, let me shift. shift cells left okay so that's what I wanted to shift it left that's that then um, we just come here let me see we have the keyword somewhere I want to clean something up okay that's it this is what I want to clean up Then I delete. And once I'm done, I can come here and sort. Let me sort largest. It's sorted. Then I can sort. I can start from smallest to largest. Fine. So all I just have to do will be to. All I have to do is just to come here and then start from the top and start just going through anyone that is a reasonable keyword, sensible keyword that has low competition. I pick it. Now combine it with this later. You will see you have a lot. And I just have done a good research for this keyword, Sony Alpha 
A6000. And I can start building up my pages on it. And then with that, I can get awesome results. See how simple it is? That's basically that. I've got from here. I've got from here. Now this one is loaded. See, Sony Alpha A6000 versus this. You can see how easy it is to rank. And it has also given us more keyword ideas. You see this versus that. It's given us much more keyword, many more keyword ideas. So, but I guess many of these keyword ideas will also be in the other, other one. Let me just still view all the keyword ideas and then copy to clipboard and then I'll just, let me just export export all so this one just has six I can just take my time and look at it later but virtually everything here is winnable everything here, virtually all of them here are winnable so even 36, 35 are still low so that's just about it. If you follow this process, you would have researched easy to rank keywords that you can win with minimal effort. And then if you have a lot of them, let me say I have 200 of these and I'm getting an average of 30 visitors from each. That's what, 6,000 visitors. And now do not get something wrong. Let me show you this before I, I stop this, uh, st uh, this level. Now, this does not, this, with this, you, you will still eventually, probably as your site grows, you will still, like with this now, you will still rank for Sony Alpha. If all things as you continue, you will still rank for the shorter tail keywords. You get my point. As you progress, if you do your stuff well, let me use how to lose weight. Because that's a better how to lose weight. Now, if you write how to lose weight in two weeks at home, you may, as you keep working, you might still end up losing weight and winning the, the, the search phrase for how to lose weight. You may still end up winning the search phrase, not immediately, over the years. You may still end up winning for lose weight. But that one is a, is a long shot. But what we're trying to explain is that when you start and you're doing how to lose weight in two weeks, in two weeks, without exercise. You have already started ranking. Why you have started ranking? And let's say I'm diet. You have already started ranking with that small keyword. As you are ranking for the small keywords that may be bringing you 20, then later you are no longer just rank. Let's say you started ranking for how to lose weight in two weeks without exercise and diet. And as you keep moving, you start ranking for how to lose weight also with how to lose weight in two weeks without exercise. And then later, you start ranking for how to lose weight in two weeks. And later, you may start ranking for how to lose weight. And then you may now start ranking at a point for lose weight. But you see, at every point in the journey, you'll be getting traffic. The point is that we want to use this tactics because it helps us get results very quickly. Okay. That's that. If there's any question you have, please send it to me and I will do my, call me or send me an email and I'll do my best to answer you. I just want to be sure that I have treated everything. Else. Okay, we have uh, one more thing I need to talk about. I know many people will like this part. How to raise the capital you need. Um, how you, why, how to raise the capital you need and also build long-term passive streams of income for yourself by helping others, especially old folks, retired folks, and about to retire folks. That's pretty strong. Also, how to raise the capital you need to need while build, and then also build long-term passive streams of incomes for yourself, for yourself by helping others, especially old folks, retired, and about to retire folks and those working in corporate places. Now let me ask you one question. If you meet the average person who is about to retire, what is one of his biggest problems? One of their biggest problems is that they are afraid about how they will cope with the little pension money they get. Now that is for people who worked in standard companies that pay pensions. 
Many people do not work in such places and they are afraid. Some of them are thinking, will I still be working at when I retire? So such people, if you tell them about this, they might not know how to build it. But we have a done for you program where we build it for them. As they build as we build it for them, we can guarantee that within the first twenty-four months, within the first twenty-four months, they would have first made at least three times the ink the amount they invested in the site. That's the first thing. But but before it gets to the twenty fourth month, by the twenty fourth month, they should be making at least a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars monthly from that site. But let us say a thousand dollars monthly. You know what a thousand dollars is? At the current rate of three sixty, that's three hundred and sixty thousand naira monthly. Passively, they don't have to do anything because we would have wo we have worked our own commission into it and say, look, even if we take our own commission, take the cost for building, you will be making three hundred and sixty thousand monthly. That's about it. That's all you need to do. Now, this will work for people who are about to retire, even people who are working in corporate places and want to create another stream of income. You can also sell this to them, and also people who are not working in corporate places but also want another stream of income. It works, and I think that is everybody. So if you have people who you think qualify for this, you know all it will cost them? All it will cost them is about a one-time payment of one million naira, and we'll build them a website that will make them passive income of about 360,000 naira to one million naira monthly when it matures, and the maturation time is about two years. But before that two years, those, the two years, it would have started making money if it about it at about the twelfth month. But we are guaranteeing that by the time it gets to two years, it will be making you at least three hundred and sixty thousand naira monthly. So if you know people who are interested, or if you are interested, you can leave a comment and tell me you want it. Or you can send me an email, and then if you know people who are interested, and uh, you don't have the money, but you know the people are interested and they have the money. If you bring people to us, we will we can discuss our percentage. We can give you a commission because you now become an affiliate of ours. You are promoting our product and for promo pro promoting it, we give you a percentage of our profit. We give as high as 25% of the monthly revenue generated. So if, the, if, if we promise the people we are going to be giving them 1,000, it means we know that the site will be making up to 2,000 every month, 2,000 dollars every month. And then that means you can be earning as much as $500 monthly, passively, when those sites mature. Now, I know I'm not giving you much details about this opportunity, but if you're interested in the opportunity, you can call me or send me an email, and I will discuss it in more details with you. This, Im this uh, lesson is already long enough, and I think I have to stop it so far. If you have any questions, send to me. Thanks for watching, and I hope you watch it repeatedly so that you pick every lesson that is supposed that is there and then you build a niche site you have a foundation for building a niche site that will stand the test of time and earn you a lot of money god bless you for watching